me see if I get the brain cell to kick in here. Uh, <laughs> my name is Ralph Eaton, and I'm an artist. Well, all my life growing up, I always liked making things. I'm an only child, so probably instead of having brothers and sisters to play with, I had to entertain myself. So I built models and made things. Uh, graduated high school, kicked around for a couple of years, and uh, then decided to go into college. And uh, art seemed to be the only thing that was interesting to me to do. I could go down the classifieds and pretty much check off everything that I didn't want to do. Um, so I, I started school at the San Francisco Art Institute. And I went for three years as a painting major, took a semester off, turned into three years, found myself back in Richmond, finished up school at VCU with a sculpture degree, uh, went back out west uh, with a friend, and made other people's art for a living. That's what we called it. And that meant that we built floats for the uh, Rose Parade for 10 years. I worked in Hollywood doing sets and props, and eventually worked as an artist assistant for what I would call art stars or fast lane artists who could afford to pay people to make their work. Back here in Roanoke now, uh, and still have this awesome studio where I can do my work uh, relative to Los Angeles and New York and San Francisco, some of the other cities that I live. Roanoke is very affordable. It's, it's, uh, it's, you can really get by here for next to nothing and have a great big space like this for next to nothing and do work and be able to live and do your work. I can't just say I have a favorite place in Roanoke. I have favorite places. This is one of them. <laughs> this is uh, my favorite place to come uh, spend my time and do work and play. Uh, 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 spreading out a little bit in the state of Virginia. Uh, right here in Roanoke, we have the, the Blue Ridge Parkway, which passes through here. And I just love taking drives on the parkway, especially in the fall. It's just so gorgeous up there, you know, with the trees changing. Um, Richmond is my favorite city in Virginia. Uh, I love the beach. Um, I love the mountains. I love Mini Graceland. <laughs> it's not far from here. I don't know if you've heard of Mini Graceland. It's sort of like a little roadside attraction. Uh, the, 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 the people who built it have passed away, but uh, while they were alive, this woman, her name was Kim Epperly, and she was a hardcore Elvis fan, and she built like a miniature version of Graceland in her front yard that's about the size of a couch. And then she kept adding to it. She had many Tupelo birthplace, many church that he used to sing in, many Coliseum that he sang in, <laughs> on and on and on. It's a real cool little roadside attraction by a folk artist. Those are some of my favorite places in Roanoke. I mean, in Virginia. I call myself a junk processor. <laughs> um, I used to, in art speak, I guess they call it uh, mixed media or found objects. I just call it junk. I like using just found, you know, things that I just gather, pick up off the street, these flowers came from out of a graveyard. I didn't steal them off of graves. I took them out of the trash cans. <laughs> sort of dumpster diving, I guess. Uh, but just, you know, pick up things here and there. Um, as I say, I used to build uh, floats for the Rose Parade. So I sort of adopted the, the technology that I use, which is called rod work. And that's what the art rat is out, that's parked outside. Uh, that's made with float building technology, which is just a uh, fabrication process uh, with steel. You take pencil rod and just like bend it in the shape. You can make any shape you want. So I've incorporated that into my own work. Also, maybe you can tell I have a proclivity for stuffed animals. I use stuffed animals a lot. You just came from the museum, right? Yeah. The big white piece that's in there, fuzzy kudzu. Yeah. That's my piece that I was working on for about a year. Well, my adopted mom and dad, I was adopted at birth, and uh, my dad... Uh, my last name's Eaton. Uh, there's a lot of Eatons um, up in Parisburg, which is up near Blacksburg. I can't remember the name of the county at the moment, but uh, apparently there's a lot of Eatons from up there. Uh, my mother was born in Glen Wilton, which is a little bit north of here. It's just a little bit south of um, Newcastle, I think is what it is, or... I can't remember the name of the town. It's just, I mean, it's like a stoplight or something, if that, or a stop sign probably. Anyway, they were born there, but they moved to Roanoke and grew up in Roanoke. Nice. Otherwise, I have like an amazing story about my birth parents, but I don't know if you have time for that. <laughs> if you want to. Uh, it's, it really is an amazing story. Nice. <laughs> but it's not. I, no, I don't mind telling it. Um, my mother, my adopted mom and dad, who I'll just refer to as my mother and father. Uh, during the Second World War, my mother, my adopted mother, my mom, uh, she was working for the USO. 
and she was at this uh, uh, dance for the soldiers. She met this young man, a young soldier. His name was Ralph Jones. And they fell in love, uh, had a whirlwind romance, got married, and uh, about a month, and then he went to Germany. About a month later, he was killed. Yeah, tragic story. Also, Ralph Jones was from Eaton, Colorado, right? So Ralph Jones, I'm Ralph Eaton. She marries this guy, Ralph Jones, from Eaton, Colorado. So after she, she sort of got over that trauma, right? And then uh, after the war, she uh, got reacquainted with my father, James Ralph Eaton. And they got married. They had gone to high school together, but they hadn't dated or anything like that. But they knew each other. They got married, tried to have a kid. They couldn't have a kid. Something was wrong with mom. So she had to have an abortion, you know, to save her life, I guess. And um, couldn't have kids. Fast forward 10 years. My mom had kept in touch with her first husband's family. And sometime in 1957, she got a phone call from her mother-in-law, Ralph Jones's mother. And she said that uh, Ralph Jones's younger sister had gotten pregnant and they wanted to send her back here to Virginia to get an abortion, 1957, right? Pretty scandalous. So my mom said, sure, send her back here, but there'll be no abortion. They can come back here and, you know, stay, uh, have the baby here, go back to Colorado, no one would be the wiser. I am that baby. A little bit further, they never told that family that I was that baby. And that was the part I sort of don't get. How could they not figure out that, <laughs> you know, I was uh, her baby? So after about six months, they sent a couple family members back here, not the mother, but a couple family members back here to look at this baby and see if there was any family resemblance. And for that day, they switched me out with another baby who was the same age for these relatives to come look at and decide, <laughs> and decide that, that it was not their baby. And they went back to Colorado and said, it's not their baby. So isn't that an amazing story? <laughs> I think uh, I grew up here and I didn't really care for Roanoke at all. Hated it, in fact, and left and came back about 10 years ago. And since then, uh, like-minded thinkers, we have found each other and we've been collaborating on all kinds of events, art events, uh, uh, bicycle events. We have a really strong bicycle community here and we have events there. We have an art community and music community and just want to keep that rolling. You know, there's the Mill Mountain Star that's uh, not far from here, and there's a plaque at the Mill Mountain Star. That star was put there in 1949. There's a plaque that says this star is to commemorate the progressive spirit of the Roanoke Valley, which I will say has taken 60 years for it to kick in, but <laughs> it's, it's kicking in now, and Roanoke is becoming, uh, I guess it's considered like one of the small, cool cities. I mean, you know, like with, along with Asheville, which has been sort of this hip place forever in Richmond. It's been a cool place, but largely, I think, due to VCU and the art community and music community that's there. But uh, anyhow, Roanoke now is gaining this reputation for being like a hip destination, I think. And so we just want to keep that rolling and just keep it getting better and better. My personal hopes and aspirations uh, for myself as an artist, uh, again, I will refer to the answer to the first question, but then for myself personally, um, I like collaborating with people in the community. There's a lot of good people here and it's fun to work with and we, you know, we connect and we have a community and, and that's a wonderful thing to have. Uh, so in addition to that and keeping the ball rolling with that, uh, personally, I, you know, I, I have a museum show right now over at the top of the museum. Uh, it's the first big uh, museum show I've had. I would like to get more of those. Uh, I do have another uh, upcoming exhibition at Roanoke College in about a month that I'm working on right now. All this stuff that's uh, surrounding me here right now will be for that exhibition. And I just, uh, in addition to being part of the community here and exhibiting locally and helping organize events, which I do, this is an event that I helped organize called Project Project that was a collaborative uh, uh, art event that we had out, out on the streets of uh, Roanoke here. We shut down the streets and we, you know, about a dozen artists came together and we just had like this big, you know, uh, sort of like in, uh, the In Light Festival in Richmond. Very similar, light-based artwork. Um, so in addition to doing that, I would like to uh, keep working here locally and get my work beyond Roanoke as well, which I have done a little bit. I've exhibited uh, at uh, Virginia Beach and Richmond and Abington to the south. And I uh, just, you know, I like to get my work out there further than regionally. Um, this piece right here, uh, I'm working on for a show at Roanoke College that's coming up in a month 
Uh, I think I'm titling it at this point. I think the title of it is uh, Fantasy Island. Uh, there are lights uh, that are on it here at the four corners. They're like these laser lights that throw lights all over it. Um, it's sort of recycled. Uh, it's, it's, it's containing recycled materials. The chassis for this that's under here is uh, from a float that I did collaboratively for the Marginal Arts Festival Parade, which is uh, another festival that we have here. And I was telling you earlier about the, uh, the parade that I help organize here. And uh, so after the parade, uh, th this was a circus wagon. It was sort of like a cage and we had like critters inside of it, sort of and pulled it down the street. After the parade, I just sort of broke it down and I'm recycling it into a personal sculpture. Um, so that's sort of what's going on with that one. Have you uh, uh, been to the Shenandoah Academy or like the American Liberty? What is it? They have the they have a bunch of roast uh, or not 